If I wanted to get to 5% body fat by summer, there's a couple big levers that I would pull. And boy, do they work. Full disclaimer, this stuff is intense. It is real. I don't recommend that everyone goes out and does this. This is serious, serious, serious stuff. But it also has a lot of scientific merit behind it. So if I wanted to get down to 5% body fat, get absolutely shredded and peeled in a short amount of time, I would do something called PSMF. Now, in addition to that, I do some other things. This video isn't just about PSMF, but that's the biggest lever that I would pull. What the heck is PSMF? Well, it's where I bring my fat intake down ridiculously, down to like 20 grams per day. And I bring my carbohydrate intake down pretty much to zero other than vegetables. What do I make up the rest with? Lots and lots of ground beef, lean ground beef and lean meat. But let's talk a little bit more about what this looks like because I don't want you to just go out willy nilly and just do that without understanding how it works. I popped a link down below for Create Creatine Gummies, 50% off of them. So after today's video, check them out. 50% off allulose sweetened gummies. These have 1.5 grams of creatine per gummy. So it makes it so you can low dose your creatine. When you're talking about getting in shape for summer, might make some sense. Helps preserve a little muscle mass by keeping your strength high, even if you're in a caloric deficit. There's countless bodies of research when it comes down to creatine. So I'm not blowing any smoke. The stuff is legit, but the little gummies make it easy to sort of microdose creatine throughout the day. So I find I don't get the water retention that I would get if I were to just drink like a five or 10 gram bolus of it at one sitting. Not to mention 50% off is pretty darn awesome. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video, their new sour apple flavor, holy smokes, especially with no added sugar in it, off the charts. Now I've done PSMF a lot before. I've used it as sort of a miniature cutting phase and I only do it for short periods of time. PSMF works fast. I'm going to give you a little bit of a theoretical scenario here and this isn't exactly how it works mechanistically but it gives some context. Let's say for example, you are normally eating a moderately high fat diet and your body gets accustomed to utilizing those dietary fats as fuel. And that's just part of life. But then you rip away carbohydrates and you rip away fats. The body has no choice but to tap into your stored fat. It's pretty simple and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. Most people think that when your calories get that low, you start catabolizing and breaking down muscle like mad. So nobody wants to do that. However, the literature is so, so, so strong, supporting the fact that as long as you are eating high amounts of protein, you will preserve your muscle mass. You will preserve that muscle mass. The downside is this ends up being very low calorie. So what it ends up looking like for me is about one gram per pound. Now you might be surprised to hear that at 5'10", I only weigh about 180, 183 pounds. So for me, that's about 180 grams of protein that I'll eat in a day. That's around 800-ish calories. And then I allow a little bit of fat to come in. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm turning this video off. This guy is crazy. He's nuts. He's lost it. Forget it. Guys, this works. I'm not the only person that's talked about it. I just saw Menno Henselman's talked about it the other day. He's highly credible. Lots of credible people talk about this. It's not something I'm doing for 18 weeks. I'm doing it for... 10 days, maybe 14 days before metabolic slowdown occurs. So hate on me all you want, but the ones that want to do it, those are the ones that are going to see the results. And I'm not saying you do it for a long period of time, but you also should take some serious caution. Keep hearing me out. I add the fat at the end of the day. That way throughout the day, I'm keeping the protein intake high and my body has the best chance of tapping into the fat. Sure, the caloric deficit is driving a lot of the fat loss, no doubt but the thermogenic effect of the protein is adding to the equation and the lack of carbohydrates is making it so I don't have any glycogen really left to pull. And of course, the lack of dietary fats. As much as we don't like to admit it, fats do store pretty easily. So when you pull the fats out of the diet, it has no choice but to start pulling them from your adipose tissue. Vegetables are fair game. 
Now, when I say vegetables, I mean greens. Pretty much have unlimited greens. However, I still kind of put those towards the end of the day as well. Believe it or not, 180 grams of lean protein coming from lean 96% ground beef, lean chicken, lean fish, lean shrimp, things like that, the occasional protein shake, Trust me, you'll be satiated. That's a lot of protein. I add a multivitamin into the mix. A lot of times I'll take a liver capsule so I get a little bit more vitamin A and things like that. And I usually low dose some creatine at about three grams. I reduce my creatine. If I wanna get down to 5% body fat, I want veins in the abs, I wanna look super summer conditioned, I will reduce my creatine intake down to a point where I'm still getting benefit, but I'm not getting the slight hint of water retention that might be there. Within this, I'll also go on fasted walks. So here's the thing. We know now from the scientific literature published in 2023 that as long as we get enough protein in the course of the day, it really doesn't matter. So that means if I'm already in this protein sparing PSMF, protein sparing modified fasted state, that is going to allow me to be able to occasionally fast for, I don't know, 14 to 18 hours and probably get even more fat burning effect because I'll already be going into a deficit and I'll just load my protein significantly more when I do eat. That part is optional, but I'm telling you, if I wanted to get down to 4%, 5% body fat really quickly, it's what I'd do. There's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. I actually had 15 people that were very obese do a PSMF style diet for six weeks, and they lost 32 pounds of fat in six weeks. And guess what? They preserved their muscle mass because the protein intake was high. If the protein intake is high, you will not break down a lot of muscle, at least in the short-term effect of something like this PSMF approach. Resistance training becomes critical because if you don't use it, you lose it. The number one stimulus for maintaining muscle is resistance training. The number two stimulus is protein. The number three stimulus is calories. We are eliminating the calorie variable. That's the only thing we're eliminating. You're still gonna have the stimulus and you're still gonna have the protein. You will maintain your muscle. You're not doing this forever. You also are going to eat red meat. If you don't eat red meat, it's not the end of the world, but the vitamin quality that you're gonna get out of red meat is going to help you on this low of a calorie protocol. The next thing that I do in addition to PSMF, if I wanted to get down to 5% body fat, I would start compartmentalizing my training. I would dissect and say, this is resistance training so that I get maximum motor unit recruitment. I would no longer do cardio and resistance training in the same workout. I do that normally just to stay and maintain. But if I wanted to get shredded, 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 I would compartmentalize them. I'd start focusing heavily on my resistance training so I'm not compromising any integrity of my lifts and getting maximal motor unit recruitment and getting the most potential hypertrophy, or in this case, preservation that I possibly can. And then I would keep my cardio separate and my cardio would become very low intensity. I would sacrifice my VO2 max. I would sacrifice some of my aerobic threshold and even possibly anaerobic threshold intensity and power for body composition. Let that be known. I would sacrifice performance if I was trying to get to four or 5% body fat. It's just gonna happen that way. That means low intensity cardio and resistance training. I would lose a lot of my wind. I would drink yerba mate tea before my workouts before my cardio sessions, and I would drink green tea during and after. Yerba mate seems to have better fat oxidation, a little bit more oomph, and there's something weird about it. I don't know what the flipping heck it is, but it amps you up and it turns something on in your brain. More research needs to be done as to why yerba mate is so dang interesting and so good for fat loss. Green tea, good for muscle preservation, also blunts the appetite. That just makes protein sparing modified fasting, PSMF, that much easier. Not to mention, I get a steady stream of fat oxidation improvement coming from the caffeine and the green tea catechins. I will not do cheat meals when I am prepping to get down to four or 5% body fat. Now, if I have a month to get shredded for summer or to get shredded in general, a cheat meal will derail me. If I am doing protein sparing modified fast for three weeks, my metabolic rate will start to slow down. So that means when I have a cheat meal, that cheat meal is going to have significantly more negative impact because they are now, that cheat meal is now dealing with a slower Thomas's metabolic rate. If I used to burn 2000 calories daily, maybe now my body's coming to a screeching halt and only burning 1500. So that means there's an extra amount of negative effect that cheat meal is gonna have on me because I am not burning as hot. So why even risk it? Not to mention the leptin effect, the metabolic effect of just having one massive cheat meal. 
it's not the best. And that works for bodybuilders that are dropping from 30% or 20% down to 10%, but it's not the best when you're going from maybe 12% down to 5%. So instead, I'll take three days out of the week that I'm doing protein sparing modified fast, and I'll add a little treat in at the end of the day. That's all it takes. I don't have to do it every day, but I'll add a little treat. I'll add a couple, maybe 150 calories or something from a treat. That's gonna be the cheat meal. You're looking at me, you're saying, this is boring, comment, this is horrible. Why would anybody do this? This is extreme. You're giving people problems. Guys, <laughs> sacrifices. Like you're gonna get to four or 5% body fat and get shredded for summer. You're gonna do some crazy things. You're gonna eat a dog turd. You're probably, you know, gonna do whatever. You're gonna do whatever it takes to get there within reason. I'm giving you probably one of the more reasonable ways to do it that doesn't completely catastrophically destroy your metabolism. And nobody said, that I'm normal and that you should try to be like me. Lastly, I will occasionally have surpluses and during surplus periods, I will move as much as I can because I understand that my non-exercise activity thermogenesis is going to go down when I am doing this kind of dietary protocol. I am shrinking everything down, high protein, <laughs> things are gonna slow down. So when I do have more calories, I will move as much as I can to stimulate that metabolic rate. By the way, the amount of like total time frame that I'll do this is 10 to 14 days, or I'll go one week on, one week off, one week on, one week off for four to six weeks. It works, it's extreme, but if you wanna get to four or 5%, that's what it's gonna be. I'll see you tomorrow.